Hello, and welcome to Jason Cabinets Experience. I'm your host, Jason Cabinets. Our guest today is Amber Wright. Amber, are you ready to be great today? Yes. Amber helped co-found the company Saharasara. I know I said that wrong. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get corrected later. In January 2020, they helped with business development, specifically with web and software development, as well as market research. Amber's path to the business is quite interesting, and she very much enjoys sharing her story. It goes to her being an artist, musician, and her path went through healing through a depression. Amber, thank you for being here today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me on, Jason. So Amber, um, I'm gonna go back in time about a year and a half. You did a YouTube video called Facing Challenges as a Business Owner. I don't know if you remember that. Can you talk about that real fast? Yeah, that was a while back. Um, facing challenges as a business owner is uh, a lot about planning and planning for things that you don't necessarily think are going to come up. And a, a, the best thing to keep in mind is what your goals are and to always remind yourself of your goals. This is a part of leadership development that I have found extremely useful. And my in the, in the past year and a half, my goal wall or uh, where I put my goals and put them up or things I want to do, things I want to have done, it's evolved over the past uh, length of time where I, I write them positively and also as though they've already happened. So like travel around the world or <laughs> um, specific goals, just write them down without like, I want this to happen. Just cut out that part and just write what it is. So we'll talk about this in more detail later, but what's the difference between like positive energy and negative energy? Is that, is that even a thing? Or is that something made up? Or is mm. it like, what is that? Yeah, it's about how we look at things. It would be a positive, would be uh, from a place of love and satisfaction. Remind yourself of what it feels like when things are accomplished that feeling of satisfaction afterwards and a negative type of goal or perspective would be out of fear and out of a feeling of lack or state of, I don't have enough. And those can, when you, when you have that around you, it'll further emphasize that in your reality. So you're talking about, I think a term recently has been like the, and an or, you know, do you get to, do you pick or, or do you pick and, right? Or is like kind of like self defeating, you get to pick one each side, but and is more like the pie is bigger, right? Yeah, that is right. So Amber, um, and you I think I saw on LinkedIn, you did an article maybe a couple of days ago. I don't break it down one by one. It's like a different uh, goals you have or motivations. Mm -hmm. One one was, uh, there's always another way to look at things. Yeah, definitely. That's the biggest challenge is to get out of our own head and look at things from a different perspective. And it really opens up opportunities when we can expand our thinking. Why do you, people, why do you think people, and I'm, I'm guilty of this big time. Why do you think people are so, so negative sometimes, right? Mm, uh, patterns of behavior. Looking, there's a sense of pleasure that comes out of complaining. <laughs> That's you gotta so be true. careful. <laughs> that's so true. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> and and also blaming others for things when it's you, when you blame other people for situations or things that you end up you have created in your life, you're giving away your power. And when you give away your power to somebody else, it's deflecting that energy away from you. So when you claim this is my life, this is my reality, I made it this way, I'm here for a reason, you are giving yourself control of changing it and also of being where you are. That's really important. And then you have a saying, take care of yourself first. Why is that important? Well, that's, you, that's another thing I'm, I'm guilty of too. Like I always like take care of other people. Yeah. Lots of people do that. And I've done it too, but it's important to fill your own cup before you can fill somebody else's or give. I have a, a, a good friend and somebody I've been working with who says that you, you need to give to yourself, you need to give to yourself 50% of the time and give to others who are, you know, in need or need to receive 
25% and then receive from others 25% okay. as well. How do you deal with this? Like I always say like added value, help others out, all this kind of stuff, right? But what are you doing in this situation where like you give, 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 and that person like doesn't give back? Mm. You just keep on giving because you're supposed to just write thing to do or is a cutoff point where it's okay. I'd have this person like 10 times and every time I ask for help from them, they say no. Mm. Like how do you work that? Yeah, this is a, a delicate balance there. It depends on who it is. Uh, is it your best friend that you know is having a hard time? Maybe they just lost somebody in their mm. family. Then, yeah, it's going to be draining for you to give to them for a while, but they're your long-term friend. Mm. They're going to come around. You know it's a phase in their life. Um, but in in general, if somebody's maybe an acquaintance or and they're draining my energy, there's a really delicate boundary there that, they can't cross and it's important to cut off ties and say no. <laughs> and there's a very uh, Zen way to do this. Um, when you're walking, you know, you're walking across, you're walking down the road and you run into somebody that, you know, is kind of an energy suck. And so That's you, I like that term energy suck. Yeah. And so you, they're like, Oh, hi. And you sit, you know, you can say hi back. They're like, oh, how are you? You're like, I'm great. Isn't it a beautiful day? Oh, I got, you know, check your watch. I got a lot to do today. Have, have an awesome day. And you just walk away. You don't ask them, how are you? Or ask them, oh, what are you up to today? Because that opens up for that conversation mm -hmm. where they're going to ramble on. And two hours and later, you're like. Your energy, yeah. yeah. So there's a very kind way to decline interaction. So next on the list is. Uh, and I, I'm guessing it's an analogy, but you say clear up clutter, clutter before it piles up. So I'm guessing you're not really talking about paper clutter. You're talking about clutter in your life, right? What would you say that again? It said, uh, you have on there clear up, cl clear up clutter before it piles up. Oh, clear clutter before yeah. it piles up. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's a way of living where you don't give yourself things to do later. Okay. So first things first, do it now. When you open the mail and it's spam mail or whatever. <laughs> You rip it up, throw it away, or put it in the shredder immediately. You don't let it sit on your desk and pile up where you have to touch it again. So what is a... Same with emails, too. I know I'm saying this wrong, but what is a tetrachromat? Oh, this is a long story. Okay. Are you ready for yes, it? Yes, yes. Okay, so um, when I was a teenager, I would... Okay, so even before that, I was I was younger, maybe uh, eleven or twelve, and some friends of mine parents sat in meditation, and I was like, "What is what is meditation? What is this?" I asked around. I asked a whole bunch of people actually, and they, including one of the friends' parents who sat in meditation, and she couldn't describe it to me, and. My dad said, well, when I'm playing basketball, I, my mind goes into a state of meditation because I'm just focused on the game. And I don't know, the answers were not satisfactory. So I went into the bookstore, the, use, the old Duval used bookstore, which isn't there anymore. It was a great place, but I got some philosophical books. I learned about Zen. And um, how old are you again when you do this? Like, oh, I think I got these books 12, 13. Okay. So I read some poetry and um, Zen. I learned about Dharma. Um, I learned about the way, you know, how to live in the way. And then when I was 14, I found an audio cassette uh, in the basement, just digging through some stuff that was a guided meditation. And so that was when I first experienced meditation was like, okay, this is what it is. Um, to meditate. And then when I was 16, I started working on an organic farm and I had a healthy diet for the first time. I had organic food, chemical free, raw fruits and vegetables. And I started to notice that there's patterns in the sky and there's patterns around people and um, started to see auras or um, the energy field around us that's around us all the time. And can most people see this? Uh, I, I think that we can. We just sort of close practice. ourselves, we just close ourselves off to it. Yeah, there are practices that help us open our um, 
perception of reality that we're in. So um, I did try some of those practices as well to help myself open up. And um, one is to look at somebody or a plant in front of a plain background and just relax your eyes and just stare at it for a while. And eventually you'll see that there's this glow around things or even hold your hands up in front of a blank background and um, pull your fingers away from each other. And you can see this sort of string in between your fingers. This is like the, so, the energy that everything gives off is what you're talking about? Yeah, okay. so this is the energy around everybody and everything. Um, I didn't quite understand why I was seen differently. And um, then it led me to questioning and a friend said, oh, you can see energy. And then I went into a Barnes and Noble bookstore in Bellevue and a lady, I just started randomly talking to this lady that worked there about it because I was, you know, looking for information. She said, oh, I know exactly what book you need to read. And I got Barbara Brennan's Hands of Light and I learned about energy healing and psychology. And I studied that book like a textbook for three months. And I learned how to do energy healing. I learned how to feel the chakras, the different layers to the auras and um, how to open up to talk to spirit guides, which are basically angels that help us through our life. And so I, you know, that was at 19. Now I'm having this, these spiritual experiences and opening up and realizing that there's more to reality than meets the eye. And um, I'm gonna fast forward here till I was around maybe 32. Um, or around 30, I, I saw a news article about a woman who can see energy and see auras. And she is a painter and her, they say that she's tetrachromat, which is a unique gene trait from my father being colorblind that I have four rods and cones instead of three. And it makes it a little easier for me to see this unique perspective of the world. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. I, many years I did art relating to how I can see in this different perspective. And the art is at amberlight.org. So when you walk in a room for the first time, can you immediately feel the energy good, bad? Like, how do you, you can you tell that kind of stuff? Yeah, I, I like to keep open to receiving what's around me. Cause it's um, at this point, it's staying strong in my energy and um, being aware. And it's an intuitive thing. And we all have this, we can all sort of feel the vibes mm -hmm. of other people and, oh, maybe I, I just didn't like being around them. And I don't quite know why, but the chemistry is not right. There. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we like don't match. We don't like we conflict, whatever the case mm -hmm. would be. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I think that this is a good time to bring up uh, uh, inner, uh, a practice that I sometimes do. And let's say I go to a friend's house and I visit for a few hours. Maybe I walk around her house a little bit. Then when I leave, when I'm walking out the door, I take a deep, fast inhalation with my breath. And while I do that, I visualize all of my own energy coming back to me from around her space and I'm leaving it how it was before. Mm. And this way I'm walking out with my own power because what, what we do in sometimes we can leave our energy in places and it sort of goes in the cracks and the corners and it becomes this stagnant energy there. And then later on, we feel drained and tired. Oh, I don't know why I'm so tired in the afternoon. And we've really expended parts of who we are in other places. So with a deep inhalation, we can bring all that back. But what if like, you have positive energy? Wouldn't you want to live that, leave that positive energy with your friend? Uh, well, I already did in our conversation. I don't, okay. yeah, so... Okay. Yeah. So when you, I, I don't have to drain myself to leave positive energy around. Okay. Yeah. So like, here's a question for like, when you tell people all this stuff you're doing, right? What's the normal reaction? Are people like, this is some crazy hook stuff. Like what's she talking about? This is ridiculous. Yeah. Or are people open to it or like what's your, been your, your, your take on that? Yeah. So it comes back to our 
personal experiences Mm -hmm. and beliefs and perspectives. Uh, One of the things I learned is that beliefs can actually limit us on how we see the world around us and Mm -hmm. it can limit our opportunities. So I like to, I like to think that I have an open mind and that I can Mm -hmm. um, relate to other people's experiences as well. So I know you do a lot of meditation, right? I, I do. Yes. So before we get started by meditation, there's all these meditation apps like Calm, Insight. Are those any good or are those like ripoffs? Oh, whatever works for you, okay. what, what a person feels drawn to, I would encourage them to do that. Yeah. Okay. So how do you get started meditation? What's your process for doing it? Oh, gosh. Just get a pillow and sit on the floor or sit on, um, you know, I... I If you're propped up a little bit off the floor, it's good for your spine is in a good alignment compared to how I'm sitting in a chair right now. But whatever works for you, sit down and be comfortable and focus on your breath and slowly increase your deep breathing into a deep breathing. And that's really the basis of it is sit there and listen to your thoughts and um, a focus that's really helped for me is to pay attention and to the space in between the thoughts, the silence, like listen to the silence in your mind. Yeah, I think that's, that's a challenge for a lot of people. A lot of people like they always have the radio on podcast, always listening and they're, they're incapable of like being like in silence. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, cause then to me, I try to have nothing like at least during a day that way all these thoughts can come up, my creativity, different yeah. things can pop up. Right. I think a lot of people are unable to do that nowadays because all the, content out there, all the podcasts, all the videos, all the games, you know, on and on, on, right. Yep. That's right. That's right. So there's silence in the chaos. Just pay attention <laughs> to the silence, no matter what's going on around you know that it's there. So how often do you, do you meditate? Uh, every morning for about 10 minutes. And, um, sometimes I'll feel drawn to meditate in the afternoon or in the evening or on the weekends, it just depends. And I'm following my intuition with things. So when I was younger in my early twenties, I studied at the Nigma Institute in Berkeley, California for six months. And I helped make Buddhist texts at the Dharma Institute. It was so fun. And I took classes and had teachers. And, um, even before I went there, I had gone on some meditation retreats where I had three days alone in the woods, just meditating. And I had some amazing experiences doing this. And it wasn't, uh, I wasn't at a retreat center and I just had some basic foods like cashew nuts and some juice. Like, like, really, water. like really back in nature. Yes, really plain and um, just focused on meditation the whole time. And it was out of this drive of, you know, I know there's more to real reality than meets the eye. And I want to experience that. So what's the Dharma Institute? Dharma, D-H-A-R-M-A. Um, it was Dharma Publishing. And the Nigma Institute, Nigma is a lineage of um, Tibetan Buddhists that were in Tibet. And what was it, the late 50s, China invaded Tibet. and um, Tarthang, Tolku Rinpoche, and um, some other lamas, they had gathered as many books as they could in their backpacks and went over the border to Nepal. And Rinpoche came over to the East Coast, USA, started a meditation center, and it grew. And he has a very beautiful home on in Northern California called Odeon. It's a beautiful temple. It's private. So only certain people can go there. So what do people get right or get wrong about meditation? Um, Right or wrong about meditation. Like what do people get like the wrong idea about that? Maybe people do people like, if I do meditation for two days, I'll be completely cured or some Mm. stuff like that. Like, yeah. Cause it's a process of knowing yourself. And sometimes when you sit there and, you realize that you have a monkey mind. It's just going to keep going and going and going and latch onto this, and latch onto that. And the idea is to notice that about yourself. And it's 
so people can have an idea that maybe I'll be cured of something if I sit in meditation. And what it's going to do is bring it all up where you realize it, it'll it bring awareness to your own patterns. So I know a lot of entrepreneurs have like, I think it's called a shiny object syndrome, right? Mm-hmm. How, how can, and I guess that's the same as monkey mind, I guess. How can, how can you recommend people using meditation to get, that, get rid of that as much as they can? Wow. Yeah. Shiny object syndrome. <laughs> um, I, I know that we judge one another by what we have mm. and um, in, in my perspective, a lot of entrepreneurs can notice that people will, um, uh, you know, be in a pattern or be in a state of awareness where, let's see, I'm trying to, I'm trying to judge without judging, but basically, yes, we judge one another and shiny object syndrome will go after you know, what's that new car or how can I, um, you know, have the glamour, have these things to impress other people or impress myself. And it's a status thing. It's an ego related perspective on life. So, so can you talk about the summer of 2018? I think the summer of 2018 was a very important in your life, right? Yeah. Can you go and talk about how, the, how that influenced you? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I, that was about three years ago, I had some life changes. I lived in Alaska for 13 years and until the summer of 2018. And I, I, I separated from my kid's dad. And I, before that I had gone through some depression and some really hard times, you know, feeling down about myself, but part of it was, I wasn't reaching my, like my my life purpose. And I knew it and I was, you know, stuck in a rut basically. So I had to claim myself and say, I need these things and I, you know, I need space. And it was difficult. It was really difficult. And I had to ask for help. Now, sometimes asking other people to help you is the hardest thing ever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I also had this really awesome, right, maybe a, a week before I split up, we we're on vacation in Florida and I had, um, I had a blank notebook, brand new blank notebook. And I started writing. Um, I do a practice called channel writing where I go into a meditative state of consciousness. I ask a question, you know, what do I need to know for today? And, um, And I wrote, uh, typed up its 12 pages business plan for a nonprofit. And it had extremely specific instructions, phases, how to, how to go about making it happen in a really specific way, which wasn't the normal, you know, spiritual sort of wishy-washy, like, oh, love yourself type of. (laughs) channel writing that I'd done before. This was very specific, very business-like. It was a business plan. And I, when I reread this thing that I wrote afterwards, I was like, wow, I have to change myself and my life in order to make this happen. Had you done a business plan before that? No, no. And, um, so I, I did, I followed leadership development. I, I started listening to more things about leadership development, um, learned more about how to run a business. I went back, I got back in college studying accounting to be a CPA. And just, I, part of that was I need to know finance in order to make this happen. The nonprofit part of it is a school the Alighton Institute for Spiritual Science and Technology. And at this institute, we pay the students to learn. And what's this, is, is it like online or is it like a physical location? Um, the, first, the first phase is online. We're in that right now. And the, the second phase with the institute is a physical location. I have drawings of what the buildings look like. What do you think about the buildings to be at? 
I don't know where okay. on where it'll be. That that might be up to our investor to help decide the location. To be honest with you, I'm almost thinking in the Midwest somewhere, somewhere where there's space and also nearby to a city, because part of what we do is help urban help with urban community building. Mm -hmm. And so, what do, what do y'all teach the students at the school? Um, well, with the spiritual science and technology, it's a mix of how do we use the knowledge? For instance, I have a unique perspective because I, I've studied energy healing. I um, keep a pretty fine awareness of my intuition and um, how to use this spiritual awareness with the development of our gadgets. Mm -hmm. And how do we have gadgets that help enhance consciousness? How do we use our technology to help enhance our potential as human beings? And so how, how do you, I mean, I can't think of the right word. It's not recruit because you're not a job candidate, but how do you like, um, I guess, recruit students to come to your school? What's mm -hmm. your process for that? Yeah, there's an application, application process. process. Yeah. Um, and like, so how do you pay the students as part of the nonprofit part or like, yeah, it's part of the nonprofit part. We'll be receiving donations and they'll also be doing work, community work mm -hmm. and building work. And that's part of how the, um, studying finance helps. There's, uh, savings vehicles that can be used by organizations that have high rates of return. And you have students right now? Um, we're in the first phase of Alighton where we have um, teacher, teachers mm -hmm. and we have workshops online on Zoom. Yes. Do you have a, like a stereotypical student that you're trying to get? Like, I, I, I'm assuming someone is open to what they want to learn. Yeah. Um, yes, definitely. Um, people that um, understand technology. Mm -hmm and also understand higher consciousness and spiritual awareness. So part of our screening will be looking into that as well. Do you have like a long-term version for the school? Yes, I do. What's your long-term version? version? Um, well, in phase three of a light 10, there's primary schools mm -hmm. in er that are like community centers in areas of the world of need and um, part of our philosophy is to use our, uh, use the local resources and how can we use those to develop the communities? Okay. Um, so back to summer 2018, was there anything else you want to talk about the summer 2018? No, that's pretty that's good. That's pretty much it. Okay. Um, so next let's talk about your, uh, okay, you do a lot, like you do poetry, music, painting, you have a CPA. Do you, do you, are you still doing the financial services company? Yeah, I consider financial services are like tools I can pull out when mm. needed. Okay. Yeah. Um, so how do you get started with the poetry part? Oh, back when I was 12 and 13 and started reading poetry is when I started writing poetry too. And it's a um, feeling that comes up or an idea. And I, I'll hear the first line mm. in my head. like. Um, it's like, oh, I feel a poem coming on. I can hear the first line or two. And then once I write the first line or two, the next ones come out and it just all flows just out flows. of me really fast. And like, is there like a length of poem supposed to be or just you just write until you're done writing, so to speak? Yeah, I'll write if I get stumped, I'll reread what I've written and mm. then more will come out. Yeah. So like in your writing process for poetry, do you, like, do you have a process? You just like go the flow or do you say like, if I haven't if done, if I've not done a poem of 20 minutes, I'll stop. How do you do that? Like, how do you know you're done with the poem? Yeah, it's just when I, when the last line sounds like the last line. Okay, just something, you just, just something you just know yourself then. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's how to express a feeling. And also there's a, a place where we can be in the flow in synchronicity mm -hmm. where um, maybe we'll see certain numbers come up or certain signs, or we'll coincidentally run into somebody or we'll be thinking about somebody and they'll call. And it's this sort of synchronicity where I can be writing, writing a poem or in that flow of sharing this 
a perspective or feeling or thoughts and ideas in writing where it will come out as rhymes. It will naturally have a rhythm. So do your poems usually evolve like a certain subject or they're like, you talk about different things, just depends what the mood is? Um, recently I've been writing love poems <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, I writing about nature and about um, existing. And how often do you change your poems up? Like you like day to day, like the main idea changes, or you stay on a main scheme, a main thing for a while. Yeah, maybe it's once a week or once every couple of weeks. I'll write a poem now. Yeah. And so, do you have like all these poems, like a book of poems, or somewhere? Or I do actually. I have an ebook of poetry that I wrote when I was studying Buddhism in my early twenties, and a lot of it is Buddhist related and. Um, you know, talking about karma and it's, it's the process of self-discovery. And I wrote short stories in that about some dreams and visions that I had, um, some short stories that came to me as ideas and I wrote them out. So, so let's go to your music. You, you okay. do music too, right? Yes. Like, do you do all the instruments, singing, you do everything yourself? Cause um, I know you, I know you have a SoundCloud channel there's a point where I realized that I want to play music with other people. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my music is on pause and, um, I, I, I play though. Um, for instance, I had a, a fire and I played the guitar for a couple hours mm -hmm. and sang and just had a beautiful experience. Um, so I, I started music when I was a little kid, I was five. I started piano lessons. I did that for nine years. Um, overlapping the time I was, I was 12. I started the bass. I wanted mm -hmm. to be cool. My <laughs> sister played the guitar. I was like, okay, I'll play the bass. And, um, so I took lessons for that. I took lessons for guitar. I got an upright bass at 15 and I got lessons for that. I played in the jazz band, jazz choir, the Seattle youth symphony orchestra. I was in a girl's choir. We sang star spangled banner for the Mariners mm -hmm. back when we had the kingdom. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was a great experience. And um some guess you're not so, paying like heavy metal rock or nothing like that. Well, I um, you know, at at 18, 19, when I was really awakening up to, you know, we're in a spiritual reality, I threw out all my sheet music. I'm like, I am done playing <laughs> other people's songs. I'm gonna play my own stuff. And to be honest, it sounded pretty horrible for the first few <laughs> years. I just had no idea. <laughs> But uh, over time, my uh, learning about music theory and, uh, you know, scales comes through and it becomes an intuitive thing. I was with, I was in a band in, um, maybe I was like 22 to 25 called Freedom of Prana. And we traveled around. We thought we were going to be uh, <laughs> rock and roll stars. And, um, and so that influenced, and then I got this, um, sort of East Indian um, way of playing. So that's influenced some of my songs too. And didn't you or your, your band like open for someone kind of famous in Alaska? Uh, yeah, actually the, um, the Whalers. Whalers, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, that was fun at, in Girdwood Forest Fair area. So, so what, what part of Alaska did you live in? I was in um, Girdwood, which was a ski town for three years. And then Homer Anchor Point area. Okay. So. You were there. How long were you there? Thirteen years total. Thirteen years. Yeah. I'm guessing you had a good time up there. Yeah, it was peaceful. It's mm -hmm. a different way of living. Some really rough people. I heard some <laughs> awesome stories, and um, it's it's just a different lifestyle in Alaska than Washington. So next, let's go into your painting. Okay. Did that start the same time as the music and poetry? Um maybe music, you know, I've been doing art since I picked up crayon when I was a kid. So. Yeah, that's true. So, <laughs> um, so what do you like about painting? What draws you to that? I, um, uh, someone said it was like, um, like a relaxation technique or it's a lot of it is I'll see something really beautiful mm -hmm. and I'll want to recreate it. So how do you like, combine poetry, music, painting together. Like I was always, it's, it's always all, all them separate. Yeah. It's just whatever I feel like doing. Okay. It's 
follows my feelings. Like you ever do a poem and think, man, this would be a great song to me, make a song. <laughs> and then based on the visuals of the song, you do a painting off it. Oh gosh, that sounds awesome. And <laughs> no, not too much, but no. that, that sounds good. Cause that would go in themes, be a theme of creativity. So Amber, you're a pretty creative person. When did it first dawn on you? Or did you first realize that you're a creative person? Oh, you know, when I was younger. Okay. But um, the, what I want to emphasize is that my creativity and my spirituality led me into business. Mm -hmm. So I'm really focused on business. And I, and I think that's very rare, right? You don't, it, you don't see a lot so. of, you don't see a lot of spiritual people, creative people being like good business people, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So I, I'm getting drawn to other spiritual and creative people that have businesses and I'm helping the, or we, sorry, we are helping them develop their business, helping with, um, you know, getting the word out about what they do. So why do you think there's so many creative people that are great at being creative, whatever, but not so good, like a business being detail oriented. Why do you think there's that, that disconnect? Well, it uses different part of your brain, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, a good friend, she's a musician, an artist. She's like, I, you know, I know how to do this, the social media promotion and stuff. I just don't want to, mm -hmm. I'd rather be, playing the piano and writing my music and recording my songs than um, promoting it. Yeah. Then, then the, when there's what's saying the starving artist, that's why there's so many starving artists, right? They do the crap. They don't do the business part. I think. Exactly. So Amber, um, talk about how you're combining technology and spirituality. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, we have, a uh, important role in bringing our gifts to others and technology is a great way to do it. Nowadays, a lot of us are working remotely and we're also working with people from all around the world. And there's a way for us to be connected online and helping one another in, in these different ways. It's really beautiful. Are there any, I can't think of too, but are there any like meditation people or spirituality people that you follow? Um, yes, actually a good friend, uh, Amos Lavelle, he's a shaman and he has online journeys and um, it's a guided, guided visualization shamanic journey where um, doing this practice helped me deepen my ability to have um, information come to me or um, do astral traveling in the dream state. So I, I follow him and join in on the guided journeys. Let's suppose someone's out there listening to this. And they want to start meditation, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you recommend them to like what meditation to do or what meditation person to follow? Or so it's like you said, it's like experiment with different people, different aspects of it. Mm. Um, I think that when we open up on our, you know, I, I want to know more about this. There's more to reality than meets mm -hmm. the eye. And when we just ask that coincidentally things will come up. Mm -hmm. And it's really beautiful because that's how, that's how things work is that when we open up, there's, uh, something will come fill it. For instance, I'll give a very practical example. So you're in your, you're in your room or you're in your office and you have a shelf. So, um, a challenge, just clear everything off of it and see what fills something will fill it at some point within the next few days or weeks. So it's kind of like that. So when we clear and open and we have a uh, intention, um, I want to know, you know, I want to know a good meditation teacher. So talk about your, your entrepreneurial path. Like how do you decide to become an entrepreneur? Your business open, how did that, how did that come about? Yeah, I think that this happened. It, you know, when I was younger too, I, I always sort of thought I'd do my own thing. I learned massage therapy and I had my own massage practice, a few of them actually. So I was familiar with getting business licenses, doing the local advertising, 
renting a location. And, you know, one thing led to there, I started a t-shirt printing business, um, direct to garment DTG. And that was fun. I learned uh, gra- graphic design through doing that. I learned uh, some web development because I had to make a website for the business and uh, local networking. So that was a challenge. Ended up selling that business. And I started a plant nursery also in Alaska and um, uh, also working with plants. is like a hobby. I like bonsai and um, growing trees. But um, so with, with businesses, it's a way for us to have our independence, have freedom and be able to use our life purpose, our, our mission here. What is our mission? What do we want to do? What's going to fill us up? And sometimes that's running a business. And for some of us, it takes leadership development. How do we work with other people? How do we communicate? How can we use our skills in a positive way to lift ourselves up and lift other people up? And that's what is inspiring about being a leader in business and also working with other business owners. So for, so far for you, what's been like a pro of being a business owner? What's been a con of being a business owner? Uh, well, um, the, the pros are you can, you do have time flexibility and, um, you know, I'll just say the con right after that, which is you might end up working more than for instance, if you work with somebody else, mm-hmm. but also the pro the rewards can be great. And, um, the con, you have a lot of responsibility and all in all, I would say that in terms of personal development, there's nothing that's going to push you further than being a business owner. What, what makes you think some people are good leaders and people are bad leaders is, is that they're born with it. They're not trained correctly. What do you think the deal with that is? Oh, p- perspective. It's all about, can you motivate other people? Do you use, um, like there's, there's a way to motivate with negativity. And I don't like those types of leaders. I just, you know, when I, when I hear that, I'm like, "Mm, it's not, it's not encouraging. It's not going to encourage me to be the better version of myself. And it's like things like that. They usually, they do get more done the short term, but the long term, it's just a, it's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like the leaders who can encourage me to be the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. And also um, push me in a way that's going to have me reach those limits that I wouldn't reach otherwise. So back to the list I found on, on LinkedIn. One of the things you have on there is start, start your day with a blank piece of paper. You talked about earlier about your blank, your journal is blank. What's the point of having a blank piece of paper each day? Yeah, it's like a, your open mind. Okay. So. Uh, well, when you get up in the morning, and you write your to-do list. You don't want to write it on yesterday's to-do list, do you? <laughs> no, no, you don't. That's a good, good point. And then uh, randomly checking with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is important. This is a part of um, sales networking and, you know, just being a good friend. Because mm-hmm. sometimes we'll, you know, how, how many contacts do you have in your phone uh, how many, how many times are you going to check in with those people? Yeah. I know I have over 600 contacts in my phone personally, and, um, I probably check in with everybody once a year. That's nice. So yeah, it's good to, it's good to say hi. And sometimes you don't know who's having a hard day. And sometimes your hello is going to lift them up. Yeah. yeah that's, you're right. That's yeah. so important. Like you never know like, how, how you're doing and then they brighten up the day. Right. Yeah. It's important to be there for one another. So next, talk about your company you're currently with. And how do you say it again? Sahasara. Now, you're the CMO for them, correct? I am. Yes, I and, do marketing. And you co-founded the company. I did, yes. And that started back in, I think, 2020? Uh, yes. It, um, so back three years ago, I started talking with my business partner, Rafi. Mm-hmm. And we became good friends. And he's in Bangladesh. And we, we're both at this place in our life. What are we going to do? You know, how are we going to make it? I, you know, I was looking for job stability Mm -hmm. too. And, um, so I helped, I remember there's some times where, 
he was kind of down. I was like, you know, look at the opportunities in life and um, have a good attitude and then good things will come to you, stuff like that. And he did the same thing for me mm-hmm. too. And we, maybe it was a year later, so two years ago, we started working together and um, did some data entry projects and some research, uh, internet research. And it grew from there. And he, uh, he inspired me. He said, I want to help you grow a light in. Mm. And he shared about Sasra, which he shared before, but this time I got it. And then in December of 2019, I wrote the business plan. And then January of 2020, I filed the incorporation paperwork. And since then we've grown, we have a team and we have an office in Dhaka in the Benani district. And uh, people here in uh, Washington doing sales with me. So it's fun. It's the sky's the limit in terms of opportunity. So two part question. Part one is like, Talk about the process of finding your co-founder, right? And why you, why you're matched. Cause a lot of people see you, it's like, it's like being, having a co-founder is like being married, right? You're going to spend a lot of time with that person and you know, and you don't want a bad match. And second part, like how does that dynamic work with him being not even a continent, like being like halfway around the world? Mm. Yeah, it is interesting, but uh, a lot of things are done virtually. Mm-hmm. And so some good conversations, inspiring. When I talked about leadership development, Rafi really helps me, encourage me to be the best version of myself and to be a good leader, always learning and uh, knowing that there's opportunities and to basically help get my monkey mind out of the way so that these opportunities can happen. So does company operate on Bangladesh time or Washington time? Uh, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Or both. A little bit of both. both yeah. yeah. And where are, are your are your is your is your target customer here in the United States, Bangladesh, worldwide, or yeah, we're international worldwide. Mm-hmm. Um we're United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Japan, Europe. And what what is what does the company do exactly? We're uh on uh we're focusing on market research. Mm-hmm. Uh data research, data analysis, uh, web, de- web design and software development. Do you have like a, like a, and, uh, one, one more thing, okay. uh, augmented reality, virtual reality. Oh, nice. This is a pretty new branch here yeah. and a growing field. We're really excited to have this, uh, wing with our business. We can help create, uh, virtual showrooms or, uh, for real estate. There's a lot of applications now that people are doing so many things virtual, we can create a page on your website where they can tour the building Mm -hmm. with VR headset on. Do you have like a specific size company you go after or a certain amount of revenue you want the company to have as Uh, a customer? Oh, uh, yeah, of course, uh, medium and small. We we like to help growing businesses, especially ones that are doing good things in the world, Mm -hmm. have good intentions, give back, help make people's lives better. And how do you go about finding um, employees for your company? What's the process for that? Um, Because you're in HR, right? Yeah. (laughs) So we, um, well, we have an interview process. Mm -hmm. It depends on what is needed. And um, there's a really awesome tool called a core value assessment tool. Mm -hmm. And it can help determine a person's um, kind of like their personality traits, but it goes deeper with okay. how they actually work, how they think, how they work with others. And we assess based on that. And you, and you have people if you come to work all over the world, right? Yeah. So one, one a criticism like remote work in, I don't believe in like they say, if you have remote work, it's hard to build a culture, right? But I think you still can build a culture even with everyone, people working separately. How have you and your co-founder like built up a culture even with people, even with the people working everywhere around the world? Yeah, it's, um, it's about trust and uh, holding people to certain standards is important. Um, setting, you know, deadlines for things. And um, there's, there's an onboarding process of getting to know people too. Mm-hmm. That's important. Uh, trust is huge. So. That's very big. So 
what's the, what's the vision? So you started the company 2020, your co-founder. What's the vision for the company? Uh, data broker house, uh, neurotech company. So big so in, in the future. So, yeah. So some so big, so some big time, current, big time stuff. Yeah. Currently we're offering services mm -hmm. for business development in the future. We'll be creating products and we have some projects in the works too, that I'm not going to discuss, but it's, it helps make the world a better place, help bring education to um, people who need it. So Amber, so you have the startup, that's a full-time job. You do the poetry, the creative stuff, that can be a full-time job. You have the nonprofit, the meditation, you have so many things going on. How do you like focus and prioritize stuff from day to day? Yeah, that's important. Um, remember at the beginning, we talked about filling your own cup before you fill someone else's. Yes. So self-care is really important. Mm -hmm. Um, making sure I get enough sleep, have a morning routine, um, focusing on growing the company for the majority, like a full-time job, um, more than full-time. So, and then, um, in the afternoon, having family time. Mm -hmm walks, nature time, it really helps me stay balanced to have that space and that openness in nature um, with plants. And then the music and poetry, that's just, you know, it's easy. It's just, it's fun. Mm -hmm. Brings joy. So do you do anything else for fun or the, or the meditation and the, and the paintings that's your, that's your fun time? Oh yeah. I like to go on adventures and explore the different areas mm -hmm. in Washington. I really enjoy traveling. I look forward to traveling internationally. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. So I know like some people out there, like, you know, Elon Musk, he famously works like 10,000 hours a week. You know, some people work, you know, like day on, day off. I have one friend, he works 21 days in a row and takes two days off. Mm. What, what do you, what do you do? What do you do? Yeah, I, I work six days a week, um, full time. Yeah. And maybe, um, one week in a month, I'll take off three days and go somewhere where there's no cell signal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's again harder and harder to do that. <laughs> so do you have any other, other, other uh, startup ideas that you think about doing? Oh, like innovation ideas? Yeah. Oh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> what's, what's, what's one of them you think about doing? Um, well, it's... Um, I like to help other people help, help bring other people's ideas to reality. Mm. That's really inspiring. Um, and working on small steps with what, what I have going on, mm. but having, having ideas, that's a continual thing. So yeah. when you have your mind open, you can have ideas and, um, sharing those with others is important, but also important to stay grounded with, okay, the root, we can put that on the, put that on the side. Yes. Put small, you know, energy into it a little bit. Maybe I heard 5% some companies spend on developing new, new projects, new innovative ideas. So how has being like spirituality, meditation, all that stuff helped you as an entrepreneur? Um, helped as an entrepreneur. Well, it's, they, they really go hand in hand in some ways. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of entrepreneurs that have their own spiritual mm -hmm. um, path and know that, you know, God's got their back or whoever they pray to, mm -hmm. but it's, it, it helps inspire because when there's a stressful time or when things aren't working out right, or, you know, I mean, when you think things aren't working out right, you can go back to your faith mm -hmm. And no, I'm here for a reason. This is part of my mission, my life purpose. This is what I'm doing. And um, know that you have a good intention and that things will follow through. But there's also a point of pushing yourself. You can't mm -hmm. just, you know, hand it all off. <laughs> you have to do the work yeah. and you have to do those hard things and get out of your comfort zone and do things where you're, that you're not used to. And that's important too. Yes. For your, for your company, how do you find your customers? Like you have a marketing plan? Is that been a word of mouth? How do you find your customers? Yeah, definitely. There's, um, there's, uh, basically, a 
a whole set of things mm -hmm. to bring in customers, uh, word of mouth and networking, uh, letting, letting everybody, basically everybody I know <laughs> what I do. And that's great. Um, there's, um, listings, business listings mm -hmm. to share about the company and having good SEO on the website is mm -hmm. important. So what, what kind of business tools do you use? Um, uh, project management tools. Okay. Yeah. Um, HubSpot, Google Docs, Sheets. Basic ones. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Slack is good to communicate. I have a few of those with, um, with the clients too. Um, uh, Asana. Harvest. Harvest for, is like a time tracker it's too, a right? time tracker, okay. yeah. Yeah, um, I think a lot of people, they actually track their time, but they spend doing, they'd be pretty like messed up, right? Like I spend six hours a day on Facebook. What am I doing, right? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't think a lot of us really track what we do every day. Yeah, maybe if you're managing a social media channel <laughs> as a full-time job. Wow. Yeah. So what do you do on social media? Uh, yeah, so... Both personally I, and, I, and professionally. I really enjoy LinkedIn is great. I'm in groups on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. making posts on groups, commenting. A lot of, I, I read that 2% of people comment on LinkedIn. Yeah, I remember, I remember hearing that, yeah. Most people just scroll and they yeah. don't comment or like or anything. Um, so leave comments. It's good for you. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Um, Let's see. So LinkedIn and a little bit on Facebook, not so much anymore. It's, um, it's starting to become old school, to be yeah, honest. Old school, it's pay like for play. Gossip, yeah. gossip groups. Um, let's see. So I'm really enjoying Telegram lately. Okay. I'm, I guess I got on there too. Yeah. Telegram. I'm, I'm finding some freedom on Telegram and I have my own channel. I'm at Amber Light Life or Amber Light Life is my tag word for all the channels really. Okay. Um, I mean, all the social medias and, um, let's see, I have an Instagram, not as excited about that anymore. Um, basically just LinkedIn and telegram. I like, okay. I like to keep it simple. Yeah. So I, I know there's like what, six or seven social yeah. medias. Snapchat, you can post TikTok, on. Pinterest yes. is like there's yeah. And Twitter. Yeah. yeah, I forgot all about Twitter. Twitter is such a cesspool, though. It seems like, you know, it's so much trash on there. This is my opinion. So, Amber, is there anything else you want to talk about or anything I, I, I should have asked you that I didn't? Let's see. Um, I just want to emphasize on personal leadership development. Be a good person. Exercise your mind. Uh, listen to podcasts like this one. Listen to um, other other ways to challenge yourself, have a healthy diet, healthy diet, clear equals a clear and healthy mind. Your body feels good. Um, be a good person, do good things for your family. And, um, and I, I'm person, I'm personally and with the company helping to make the world a better place. And we all have a part to play in that. We really do. There's things that we can do locally in our community. And a, a big suggestion for me is to turn off the TV. Just turn it off. Don't, don't watch it. Don't have it on. Read books. Go outside. Do things with your hands. Um, I stopped watching movies about, gosh, I think it's almost six years ago now. It's a long time. Yeah, and I am so glad that I did. I it gave me more time in my life. I was able to get things done. I wasn't as distracted with my mind. And um, another thing with that is the uh, the emotional and psychological manipulation that happens in um, action movies, even dramas. It's it affects us, mm -hmm. and that's stuff that has to get cleared from us if you know if we want to have a clear mind so you talk about having a good diet how, how much do you know about good diet stuff and like healthy eating and stuff like that yeah um 
if you look at the package and it's got a long ingredients list with things that you don't understand, <laughs> it's probably not good for you. <laughs> um, so stick, I, I heard stick to the outside of the grocery store. You got your fruits, vegetables, mm -hmm. meat. Um, you know, some people are into bread, some aren't, but mm -hmm. just stick to the basic foods. Okay. What makes you feel good too. So, you know, of course, you know, a lot of people do the vegan diet thing. A recent thing I've been hearing about is people doing something called a carnivore diet where they eat nothing but meat. Mm -hmm. what, what's your opinion on that? I think that's really hard on the liver, yeah. heavy and fat. Just have nothing but meat. Yeah. yeah. I but, think it's but, really hard. But they, they say they lose weight and it's better for you. I, I'm like, I don't know that past the common sense test style. Well, if you have some vegetables in there, some mm -hmm. green vegetables, steamed kale, yeah, these it, people it just might like, be okay. Yeah, they're just, but them, this is meat, nothing but meat. Yeah. So I think it's hard on the body. Yeah. That's, I think, I think the same thing too. <laughs> So Amber, I understand you have something for our listeners today. Oh yeah. Yeah. I want to give an offer for website packages. We have the basic website, which is three pages home about contact with one unique email. We can build that within a week for $780. We have a regular website, five to 10 pages for around 1500. And we've got a complex website, which um, 30 days, 10 to 25 pages. It can have certain features, calendar integration, appointments, um, subscription, 2,500 and up, depending on what all your needs are. And we also do e-commerce, um, Shopify, WooCommerce, create your own store integrations. Um, we do ongoing monthly maintenance as well for website development. I worked with some people who had websites where they lost everything and had to have it all recreated and um, highly suggest to um, have ongoing maintenance. So uh, I'd also like to invite our listeners to follow me on LinkedIn. It's Amber Light Life on LinkedIn. Uh, my name's Amber Wright and I am sharing content about the um, guided visualizations, shamanic journeys, and uh, also working with a, uh, a man who's using tarot to predict the stock market. And he has over 90% accuracy. I'm following him and it's extremely fascinating. Uh, he sells uh, future readings for uh, cryptocurrency and, um, you know, different stock chart readings. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to be posting a lot about him here in the future. Um, the uh, personality uh, tool for hiring, the core values assessment, sharing about that as well. Um, yeah, I, uh, for, for your website, what's the process for that? Like, as far like the UX design, the creative process, like mm -hmm. does someone like what, what I just came to you say, Here, I, here's my idea and you go with it. Like, what's the process? Like, I, yeah, it depends on, do you have your content? Do you have mm -hmm. the photos, images, graphic design, um, content writing for the website? We want to make sure it's SEO optimized. Mm -hmm. Um, so there is a process. I, I'd like to talk with you on zoom. Mm -hmm. What's your business? What's your goal? What's mm -hmm. your plan? How do you want people to see your website? What's your goal with the website? Make appointments. Is it just a portfolio? Um, is it a, you know, is it a store? Are you selling mm -hmm. products? I think a lot of non-tech biz owners are like, they try to tell tech people, this is what I want. Right. And there's like this disconnect, right? Like I tell them podcasts all the time. If you tell like a quote, normal person like me, Jason, open the door, I go open the door. Right. You tell a tech person, you got to say, hey, tech person, stand up at a 95 degree angle, do it, you know, all this technical jargon, like detail, yeah. detail, right? And I think a lot of, there's a lot of big disconnect there sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Because there's a, we want to put the website on all the listings, uh, Google business. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure you have your social medias connected mm -hmm. and make sure it's integrated where your customers can find you. So earlier you talked about SEO. Can you give us any SEO trips or any SEO items to use? Um, there's, uh, when you're putting content on your webpage, 
you can do a search. Um, pretty sure Grammarly has one too. Um, do a search for SEO check. Mm -hmm. And there's some tools where you put your content in there and it will give you a rating what your score is for SEO. And then you alter your content on there a little bit mm -hmm. and get it to where it's uh, close to a hundred percent. Okay. And in case someone doesn't know this, why is SEO important? It is what it's a search engine optimization. And this is how Google uh, uses their algorithm mm -hmm. to help the, um, you know, whoever puts in a search term in Google to find what they're looking for. So for people out there thinking about starting a business, what advice do you have for them? Uh, write your plan down. Write everything out. Nice, nice. Yeah, everything for your business. Ask your, um, you know, ask people who you respect or mm -hmm. go and find other business owners and say, hey, I have this idea. Can I run it by you mm -hmm. and see what they think? Um, try to, you know, what inspires you about it? Get, get a good idea of what your goal is for yourself personally and what your goal is for the business and how, you know, how can you make it happen? Amber, so, you know, you're on LinkedIn, you have a YouTube channel, you, you do a pretty good job for yourself out there. Talk about the importance of small business owners, entrepreneurs, but there's people in general putting themselves out there. Mm -hmm. Talk about the what? Talk about the points of people putting themselves out there. Oh, the points. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so you want to share inf information that's useful for others. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Share useful information, help inspire people. Um, a lot of my YouTube, I've been doing m motivational videos mm -hmm. and I think that helps. So Amber, others. so with everything you have going on, uh, I mean, like you have a lot going on. How do you, like, we talked about this earlier, about like being prioritized and focused in, is there any time like you're like, you're like unfocused, unprioritized, like how do you bring yourself back to center, so to speak? Oh gosh, if you're losing focus, take a break. Okay. Um, I can be working for a few hours and I realize I haven't taken a break. Take a five minute break, go mm -hmm. on a walk. You know, I, I get more tea, uh, walk around, move around is really helps with focus. And if, if your focus isn't very good, maybe something's going on. Um, I, I find that sometimes there's a, there's a tincture. It's called, um, like memory enhancer or something like that. But I, I, that helps me focus. There's so using herbs is what I, I like to do. Um, movement is always good. Just move around, make sure your body's healthy, make sure you get enough sleep, wake up in the morning, move around and have that, uh, gosh, having your goals up on the wall can mm -hmm. really help you focus too. What are my goals? What am what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to get done today? And remind yourself of those. So when you bring up people work, work for your company in the past, what kind of characteristics have the, like the good workers have for you? Like you just like set a value on the has some characteristics that one person would have, like be like be successful working for you and your company. Yeah. It's important as a employer to find out what their strengths are, mm -hmm. what are they good at? Because if I give them something that they're not, you know, that doesn't match who they are mm -hmm. as a person, then it's not going to be successful. And I'm going to look at, I'm going to be like, what happened? Mm -hmm. And they're going to be like, I don't know, but it's what, what, what are they good at? How can I put them in projects and tasks? that they're able to succeed in. And that's, that's what I look for in employees is what drives them as a person. And is, is that same thing you look for at the Institute of at the study of spiritual science technology, you look for the same type of person there too? I would say so. Yes. Okay. Um, we're not yet in phase two of mm -hmm. Alighton, so not quite there yet. Okay. I'm and, sure you're still uh, planning everything out. And yeah, I'm, I'm at a point where I'm ready to have help make a light and happen. And tell me again, how did the idea come about? A uh, blank piece of paper. A piece of paper just popped <laughs> in your mind. Yeah, calm mind and a blank piece of paper. And that's how a light and happen. So here's a question for you. Like you have a blank piece of paper. Suppose on money, you have a blank piece of paper. Idea pops up. 
Tuesday, another Mexican speaker player and another idea pops up. How do you know which idea to follow and, and go through with them? Which mm-hmm. idea to like, okay, this is like, this is crazy even for me. I can't do this. How do you know which idea to go with, so to speak? Um, for the daily writing down today's tasks, mm-hmm. I would, you know, get as done as much done as I could that mm-hmm. day. And then some things do carry over. That's just how work is. Mm-hmm. Um, things pop up throughout the day. But with ideas, um, I would want to get, I would want to get it started and then next day I can help finish it. And if another po- idea pops up for the next day, um, you know, I got to ask myself, is it worthwhile mm-hmm. to fo- follow through on the ideas too? So here's a question I ask, I ask nearly everyone. So you, as an entrepreneur, they tell you, you know, don't stop, keep going, keep grinding. If you quit today, success might be in tomorrow, all that kind of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But is there a time when an entrepreneur should stop? Like should an entrepreneur have like a red line, so to speak? Oh yeah, that's important to have metrics. If I, you know, if I make it to, um, it's it's similar with with stock trading too. Mm-hmm. You put in, you know, don't put in more than you're willing to lose. Mm-hmm. And when you, when you, if it goes to a certain point, you need to pull out. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, like you need to pull your money out of the stock market, mm-hmm. or you need to back up. Or with entrepreneurism, the main goal is to build the company. Mm-hmm. You got to shift. Mm-hmm. If something is not going right uh, or a project isn't going right, at what point do you shift in? And that stuff needs to be decided beforehand mm-hmm. in your plan. Okay. That's important as part of a business planning, marketing plan to have metrics. When you're going to run an ad, for instance, <laughs> I'm going to get this many views or this many clicks on my link, or I need to stop the ad mm. at this point. So goals. So I want to go back quickly. Like the time, I think you said Northern California did a three day meditation thing. Yeah. So how, I mean, what made you do that? Like. Gosh, it was just uh, kind of like. So three days is a long time. Then again, it's not a long time. If it's the late afternoon and you're starting to think about dinner and getting hungry, you have this desire to make some food. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like that. I just had this desire in me, this, this hunger for going out in solitude alone mm-hmm. out in the woods and sitting in meditation. It's, it was the hunger in me. I, is that, is that the oh. longest you've like meditated by yourself, like three days in the woods? Or have you done anything else like that? Well, one, re- that actually that retreat in California was actually four days. Four days, and, okay. Um, I did two others that were three days. Okay. So, and yes, I would say so. That's the longest. And it was this day, uh, you know, full days of meditation. And mm. then at night, I would have amazing dreams. <laughs> I, c- I can imagine. Um. So uh, Amber, we can end of our talk. Can you give us any advice or wisdom, anything you want to talk about? Uh, advice on wisdom. Advice or wisdom on anything you want to talk about. Um, have, um, I just want to encourage people to be open to wisdom when it comes to you. And um, so don't be closed minded. Yeah, yeah, basically. And you know, you're not the only one in the universe. Oh man, can you say that one more time <laughs> for the people in the back? <laughs> you're not the only one in the universe. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Like so many people in this bubble, right? Like, are, are you kidding me? Right? Like, oh, yeah, I just, that's one of my pet peeves, right? These people like walk around the bubbles. It, everything is about them. You know? Yeah. That's the universe does not exist for you. Yeah. We all have our own unique experiences and we've all been through stuff. There's challenges that we've been through and it's, that's one thing about judging people mm-hmm. or putting other people in a box due to what they look like. You have no idea what they've been through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those are an article somewhere. I don't, I hate to say Facebook, it's probably Facebook, right? Where they're in, in, in Phoenix, there's an air force base right there. Right. And so this guy, he complained, he sent a letter to the editor of the paper complaining, why were this four fighter jets flying at nine in the morning of the mall? This is like BS. Who are these Tom Cruise people? Right. I don't understand this. You know, and then the Air Force commander sent an answer, right? Well, actually, this was honor the death of a, of a retiree who died, right? This is a formation we do to honor these people, right? And so it's like, okay, like this guy, oh, I, I can't go to the mall by myself, right? Not realizing that's a certain reason for it, right? Like, you know, yeah. Yeah. 
it's, it's I don't know. Yeah, people definitely definitely live, live in the bubble, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that's what it's important when I started learning uh, leadership development through uh, the financial industry and studying finance. Mm-hmm. And the big thing, get out of your comfort zone because we can be in our in our comfort zone is in our bubble. It's what we normally do in life. I asked somebody, you know, do you go on the same vacations every year? And they said, yes. Like, do you ever do anything different? And it's um, do new things. That's a big thing is if it feels a little uncomfortable, that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. You're learning something new, do a different experience. Yeah. That's I think as you get older in life, you got to do different things, right? Like mm-hmm. you got to do different things. Whatever the case may be, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we can get stuck in our normal life. And then, be in the rut. Yeah. And it's basically, are you going to change or is the universe going to change you? <laughs> and, or, you know, is the world going to change your situation for you? And then mm. you're in this state of trauma, like, oh my gosh, such and such happen. You mm. keep circling around on it. And it's, um, it's important for you to get out of your, out of your comfort zone, do new things, challenge yourself, get a little scared in a good way, in a safe way. And, um, and then you're, you're the one you're in the driver's seat of your life. That's very true. Like how many people like graduate from high school, get a job after high school, live in the same neighborhood, do the same thing, nine to five, blase, blase, right? And then 40, 50 years later, like, where did my life go? Well, you made the choices, right? To yeah. do this and not do this. Yeah, exactly. True. Amber, thanks for your time today. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you as well, Jason. This has been a great experience. And to our listeners, thanks for your time as well. And remember to be great every day. Stop that.